now once you have understood what is stock market the next question is how to buy stocks stocks or shares can be bought through primary or secondary market the primary market and the secondary market are two components of the financial market that serve different purposes and involve different type of transactions in the primary market new securities are issued and sold by companies directly to the investor this process is known as initial public public offering uh, in short ipo when companies goes public for the first time or as a follow on public offer when additional shares are issued by already listed companies the primary market is where companies raise capital to fund their operations and expansion the secondary market is where already issued or existing securities which were initially sold in the primary market are bought and sold among investor so in this market investor trade these securities with each other and the issuing companies do not directly benefit from these transactions so when company want to sell stocks to the investor the primary market comes into picture once the stock is listed after once the company sold shares to the investor the investor are free to trade these shares through secondary market so in secondary market the company doesn't come into picture so in initially hdfc will offer its share to the investor through ipo investors will buy the shares and then investor will trade share among themselves in secondary market buying share from primary market in india involves series of steps that allow individuals to purchase shares of a company when it is offering its initial public offering ipo here is a simple explanation of the process so how ipo goes let's see a company that wants to raise capital by selling shares to the public announces its ipo the company provide details about number of shares it plans to issue the price per share and period period during which investor can apply for shares then as an investor you need to fill the ipo application uh, provided by your bank or through the online platform like stock brokers or company's website the next is you need to transfer amount corresponding to the shares that you want to apply uh, for the company this can be done through net banking upi once the payment is done the next step is allotment after ipo subscription period closes the company allot share to the investor based on the number of shares they applied for the demand from other investors so if ipo is over subscribed means the demand for shares is more than the shares company want to allocate not all investor will receive full number of shares they applied for so they will receive part or they will not receive shares at all this may happen so if you applied more than more shares than allotted the excess amount will be refunded through your bank account once the shares are allotted then they are credited to your demat account a demat account holder holds your shares in electronic form in digital form you can access and manage these through online platform provided by the depository participants means the demat account holder company and once you have shares in your demat account you can trade it on the stock exchange means you can sell them through the secondary market stocks of the company listed on stock exchange can be bought and sold through secondary market that we have seen to participate or buying or selling selling share in secondary market investor are required to have a demat account a demat account short form of dematerialized account is an electronic account used to hold shares and securities in digital format it eliminates need for physical share certificates or bond certificates in summary investor trade stock in secondary market and do so they need to have a demat account now what is demat account let's see demat account in detail
According to SEBI, means Securities and Exchange Board of India, which is regulatory body of securities and commodity market in India, under ownership of Ministry of Finance, a demat account is mandatory for anyone trading in financial securities in India. For mutual fund, it is not compulsory. Remember, for mutual fund, it is not compulsory, but for trading stocks, it's compulsory. A demat account converts physical shares, certificates, bonds, and other financial securities into electronic form, making it easier and more convenient to hold and trade them. Demand account has become initial, in, essential part of Indian stock market. It streamlines the trading process and provides a secure, secure way to manage financial securities electronically. This eliminates uh, the risk associated with physical certificates and simplifies the overall process. Earlier, when the share certificate issuance was not in place, it used to be time consuming and cumbersome. Investor who bought shares of a company would receive physical share certificate as a proof of ownership. These certificates are often in paper form and had to be physically stored and uh, safeguarded by investors themselves. Additionally, whenever an investor wanted to sell their shares, they had to go through lengthy process of transferring the physical certificates to buyer. The introduction of uh, DMAT system has significantly transformed this process. Instead of receiving physical share certificates, investor holdings are now stored in electronic form within DMAT accounts. To facilitate the DMAT system in India, there are two authorized depositors, the central depository uh, and uh, system called as CDSL and the National Depositories of Securities Limited that is called as NSDL. These depositors serve as centralized entities responsible for holding and maintaining records of securities issued by companies. They electronically hold pre-verified shares and securities on behalf of investor. To access the services provided by CDSL or NSDL, Individual investor cannot directly interact with these depositors. Instead, they have to engage with intermediaries like known as depository participants, DPs. Okay, depository participants are entities like bank, financial institute or brokerage firms, means your share broker, that acts as an agent of these depositories. Investor open demand account with DPs, so you have to open your demand account with DPs and DP facilitate all transactions related to securities on investors behalf. So any deposit related service including buying or selling shares has to be channeled through DP. The DP ensures that all the transactions comply with the rules and regulations set by SEBI and, and the depositors. This setup ensures a smooth and efficient process for managing and trading securities in electronic form. Now let's see how to open DMAT account. The process of opening DMAT account is shown on the slide. This process is simple and self-explanatory. You can open DMAT account uh, online also. It's completely faceless process nowadays. So I won't go in details. Now the million dollar question is how to select stocks. Stock selection refers to process of choosing specific stocks from pool of available options based on certain criteria with the aim of maximizing returns. There are 5000 stocks available for investment. So many. So it is practically impossible to trade or invest in all of them simultaneously. Therefore, investor need to pick few stocks wisely. Now for stock picking, two widely used methods are used. One is called as fundamental analysis and another is called as technical analysis. In fundamental analysis, companies, it, the process involves evaluating company's intrinsic value by analyzing its financial statement, business model, management teams, industry positions and overall economic factors. 
the goal is to determine whether the stock is undervalued or overvalued compared to its true worth fundamental analysis helps investor identify a stock with strong growth potential and sound financial health the other method is called as technical analysis this method focuses on studying stock price movements trading volume and historical market data through charts and graphs technical analyst believe that stock prices follow trends and patterns that can be used to predict future price movements they use various indicators and charts patterns to make informed decisions about when to buy or sell stock both fundamental and technical analysis have their Uh, proponents and are utilized by investor to make informed decisions about which stock to include in their which stocks to include in their portfolio so choice between these two methods often depend on investor's risk tolerance investment horizon and personal preference now both these options require a lot of expertise so uh, you have to study at least for a year or two these two methods very well and then you can take certain decision about stock selection so this is just the introduction of or definition of the two methods